and welcome into Getting Help from Uncle Sam. Well, the primaries are about two months away. Statewide offices, national offices, there's a whole plethora of things that you can vote on. So to give you the information you need, we brought with us today Lou Burkett, and you are running for the office of governor. I'm running for governor, Jack. The governor, the governor right. of the state of Alabama. That's right. Nobody's ever heard of Lou Burdett. <laughs> well, well, we want to we want to get them to know, you know, That's obviously right. a little bit about you. You are now running a nonprofit, a very sensitive nonprofit, and yeah. it's sensitive from the standpoint that it's doing wonderful things. That's King's Ranch. Yes, yeah, right. King's Ranch and a home. Today we call it King's Home, but it's okay. been around for 47 years. Wow. Uh, you know, really serving all of Alabama. Uh, mm -hmm. We've served uh, residents from all 67 counties and uh, helping abused youth and moms mm -hmm. and kids start over in life. And, and I've been there for 19 years, and it's just been the honor of a lifetime. And before that, you were at Books a Million? Books a Million. In an executive position? Yeah, Books yep. a Million. I was chief operating officer and, and, and uh, executive vice president. I tell folks, I said, I'm as comfortable in the boardroom as I am talking with a teenager that's struggling with mental health mm -hmm. issues. Uh, to, and that's, to, and that's so important. Yeah. Yeah. What do you think in the state of Alabama right now? Everybody says, "Well, we're we're it, we're one, number one in football." That's right. After that, everything's kind of like, "Well, we're way down here." Why is that so? Why do you think? You know where you know where else we're at the top at the list. We're in the top five is corruption. We're the fourth most politically corrupt state is in America, right? and it's. It's just heartbreaking, mm. and it follow the money, right, Jack? Just yes, follow the absolutely. money, absolutely. And that's why I've self -imp self imposed a ten thousand dollar limit on country, and that's still a lot of money, ten thousand mm -hmm. dollars. But we're one of five states, five that allows unlimited campaign contributions, unlimited. So what does that do? It buys favor mm -hmm. and influence. We got to stop the flow of money. We got to have transparency in the way contributions, campaign contributions are, are given statewide. And Jack, we all know what happens. You know, all this money funnels in from PACs from all right, over everywhere. Right. It's unlimited. Outside of the state. That's right, from right. all that, over everywhere. Yes. And it's just wrong. We got to limit do. that. And, and we're one of five states that has no limit. But that has to happen in the legislature. That's right. As but the, I got to push that agenda. But the governor's got to push that from the Push standpoint. that agenda. Right. And, stand, and that's why I'm standing up for what's right now. Mm -hmm. Nobody else will talk about this in the campaign. And to be the fourth most politically corrupt, that's just heartbreaking. Mm -hmm. Nobody else will talk about it. You know why? Because they've all taken over $10,000 donations. And our current governor, right. uh, Kay Abbey, has taken $5.3 million dollars in donations over ten thousand dollars since 2017, and that's got to stop in Alabama. Mm -hmm. And so that's why I'm taking this stand. And then yes, we got you know we we've been at the bottom of the list my entire yes. life: education, health care, mental health, prisons, and it just doesn't have to be that way. You know, we, you you mentioned you know that we're number one in football statewide. Right. We love our football here in this state. Mm -hmm. What if we were at the bottom of the list? In, in, in bottom rankings in football, what would happen to those coaches? They'd be gone. They, they wouldn't have a job next, right. next, next season, would they? <clears throat> I think that's gone. what needs to happen in Montgomery. I think some mm -hmm. of these lifetime politicians don't need to have a, right. they don't need to have a job next, next uh, election cycle mm -hmm. because it was never meant to be a lifetime job. I'm so thankful that I've spent my yes. entire career, my entire career with a real job working mm -hmm. in the real world. And we can't say that about politicians in and Montgomery. People, I, people that watch this show understand education. Right. We realize education is the foundation for it everything. Is. That's right. So how do you how do we fix education in the state? Wow. You know, loaded question because we've been at the bottom my, my whole life. But there's got to be a reason. And so there. and so why, why aren't we addressing the issues of education instead of the things that we're talking about in Montgomery today? Again, it's setting the right agenda. It's mm -hmm. setting the right priorities. I'm a common sense business person. That's right. It, 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 so let's approach it. Let's have a strategic plan. Let's go after it. And education's got to be top priority because we've 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 brought jobs into this state. Mm -hmm. And how are we going to continue to bring jobs? Because everywhere I go, I was up in Huntsville. I said, Oh, we need 400 jobs at Mazda. 
you know, a, mm -hmm. a talk with a with a big, big electrical company owner in Birmingham. I need I need electricians. I need HVAC techs. I need plumbers. You know, we need jobs everywhere, but it can't happen without an educated workforce. Yeah. If you don't know that one and one is two, you're in trouble. So it's got to be the top priority. So mm -hmm. there's a lot of things we we need smaller classrooms, we need teachers that can have more resource, resources in the classroom to do their job like teacher's aides uh, that we don't have in, in a lot of schools. Mm -hmm. We need mental health counselors because our kids are in crisis. I see it every day at the nonprofit where I am, where kids are in crisis, just struggling mightily with mental health issues. We gotta have school nurses there. So teachers mm -hmm. have the support that they need to do their job. and. We need to incentivize good teachers and we need to get rid of bad ones. Right. And we don't do that in Alabama. And that's holding us back. Mm -hmm. We gotta incentivize the good ones and get rid of the ones that aren't that don't care about teaching because well, all they do, and I have teachers complain to me about this, sure. that all they do is hand out a worksheet or go mm -hmm. look at that go look at that assignment on a on a Chromebook. That's no right. way to teach. Well, and of course the education system's upside down. All the money is up here in That's administration right. by the time you get to that poor teacher. That's right. There's nothing there, and it needs to be turned around totally. There you go. Yep, that's the way to do it. Lou, to let our folks know, obviously, you're running for governor. Yes, sir. How can they get a hold of you? Do you have a website? And we're going to put a phone number Thank if you. they need to call. LouIn22.com. Lou, L-E-W, LouIn22.com. Follow me on social media. Okay. I'm on all platforms. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, I really appreciate, um, you know, folks finding out about me. And just remember this. Do your homework. Look and find out everything about the candidates. Then make informed decisions. And we'll be right back right after this.